Hey everyone, it's Christopher, Mono County Library Director and co-host of the Oxygen Stars podcast, and it's Book Talk Friday, so I'm back with a couple of great reads from Mono County Libraries, one old and one new. Let's start with the old this time. Bridget Jones' Diary by Helen Fielding. This came out in 1996. You know, I was recently listening to a podcast of Fielding talking about this book and was just reminded how much fun it was to read when it first came out. It started out as a newspaper column in a UK newspaper in the early 90s. And alongside Candace Bushnell's Sex in the City column, it was popular at the time for magazines and newspapers on both sides of the Atlantic to have young professional women have bylines about their own lives. Fielding didn't want to write about her own life, so she made up Bridget Jones and her hijinks and honestly thought the column would only last a couple of months because it was just so ridiculous. Instead, it became popular, and like Sex in the City, it ended up being a book that struck a social nerve in a very comic way. In this book, Bridget Jones is a 30-something singleton in a personal quandary about the direction of her life and her resentment against married smugs who seem to inadvertently humiliate her at every turn. Now, in her BBC Book Club interview 20 years later, Fielding reminds us that in the mid-90s, women in their 30s were still routinely asked, when you're going to meet a man, settle down, get married. Well, the diary begins with some New Year's resolutions. And let me just read a couple of them so you get an idea of what they are, because they set the tone for the book. She actually divides them into, I will not, and I will, just going to read a couple. I will not drink more than 14 alcohol units a week. I will not smoke. I will not waste money on pasta makers. I will not waste money on books by unreadable literary authors to put impressively on shelves. I will not have crushes on men, but instead form relationships based on mature assessment of character. And in the I will column, I will stop smoking. I will drink no more than 14 alcohol units a week. I will reduce circumference of thighs by three inches, one and a half inches each. I will not go out every night, but stay in and read books and listen to classical music. There are a lot more resolutions there. You read the book to find out just how many she's actually lived up to. Bridget has two love interests in the course of this diary's year. The first is Daniel, her boss. This is pre-Me Too movement. And he, of course, is charming to the point of being devious and ultimately cheats on her. And Darcy, a lawyer her mother desperately wants to set her up with, but whom Bridget initially dislikes. Now, you notice the name Darcy. In the mid-90s, Jane Austen was having a moment. Emma was on the big screen and the little screen in competing adaptations. Pride and Prejudice had just been a very popular miniseries on the BBC with Colin Firth in the Darcy role. Fielding purposely models Bridget Jones' diary on Pride and Prejudice. She pushes on society's obsession with women being unmarried, overweight, smoking, dating different men. It put chick lit on the map in the U.S. And I have a hard time remembering a comic novel since then that had struck such a popular nerve. It had everyone I knew going, have you read this yet? Reading it today, you do get an idea of how much we have changed in the last 25 years, especially as social media has come along and in some ways made it better and in other ways made it worse. As with Austin's book, there's an innocence to Bridget Jones that endears her to you, but it is not an innocent book and she is not an innocent character. And perhaps that's what makes it an enduring, deliciously fun read. This is Bridget Jones' Diary by Helen Fielding. Now for the new Shakespeare for Squirrels by Christopher Moore. Now, this book came out last summer. A lot of you know Christopher Moore is one of my favorite go-to writers if I just want a good escape into a laugh-out-loud read. His books are typically ridiculous and goofy and funny. Shakespeare for Squirrels is openly a take on A Midsummer Night's Dream centered around, and stay with me here, King Lear's ex-court jester named Pocket of Dog Snogging, who you may have already met if you read his previous book, Fool. Well, this time, the fool is washed up on the shores of Greece after being set adrift by pirates with his half-wit apprentice and a pet monkey. They meet Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream, who ends up murdered with an arrow through his heart, and Pocket is the prime suspect, although he ends up murdered too, or maybe not. At any rate, that then leaves his apprentice as the new suspect, and while the play's characters are working out the Pyramus and Thisbe play, and Oberon and Titania swan about being difficult with people and with each other, Pocket the Fool must solve the murder if he wants to save his friend's life. Now, like Moore's other books, this one is inventive, it's easy, it's fun, and with wordplay and dad jokes aplenty, it weaves in and out of the Shakespeare play. It's helpful if you're familiar with A Midsummer Night's Dream, but it's not absolutely required. 
and shake squirrels do factor in, but I'm not going to give away how. One reviewer describes this as a kicky, kinky, wildly invented 21st century mashup with franker language and a higher body count than Hamlet. Sold. This is Christopher Moore's Shakespeare for Squirrels. This is Helen Fielding's Bridget Jones Diary. Both these and the originals, Pride and Prejudice, Midsummer Night's Dream, are available in Mono County Libraries. All seven of our locations are open. You can come in and browse for fun books that you want to read this spring. In the meantime, stay safe and happy reading.